S M R M or Asmaram. Today, you are drinking with a dwarf. Enjoy. Oi, barkeep, bring another rune for me and my new friend here. We'll have two of your finest battle brews, if you'd be so kind. And uh, here's something for the missus. Aye, that's the stuff. Take a good look at those steins, my long-legged friend. After a few sips, you won't be seeing anything clear for a while. Not that that's a bad thing. Looking at a face like yours, I wouldn't mind having my vision go a bit blurry myself. Cheers, human. Here's to our health, home and happiness, whatever they might be. That's the stuff right there, laddie. It ain't a proper brew if you ain't wiping the froth and foam off your whiskers afterwards, eh? You got to soak the flavor saver, don't you know? And for ancestors' sake, human, don't forget to munch on a dwarven pretzel or two, or you'll be flat on your back like my cousin Snorri after a march. You know, I can't quite place my finger on it, but there's something about you, human, what's different from the rest. Not to be implying that all humans are different in a bad way, but they sure are different in a different way, if you're catching my meaning. Such strange creatures, if you don't mind me saying. Ye humans are grow up so quick-like, sprouting like weeds straight out of the ground. A dwarf blinks a few times, and before you know it, a human's dead. And their sons and daughters are all grown, and there ain't no guarantee that they'll be like the parents neither. Sometimes they don't even take the same name, or the same job. How's a dwarf supposed to keep track of ye humans? If you keep changing things up every 50 years or so, madness, I say. But I think you humans are mad in a good way, sometimes. Your lives are short by our standards, aye, but the things you humans do in such a short time is astounding. Mind you, no human craftsman's going to be able to compete with dwarven work, and that's just simple mathematics. A dwarven artisan will spend centuries perfecting a bridge, a house, an axe, whatever it might be. You humans just don't have that same luxury. But, even so, the masters among your kind are capable of producing great works in a fraction of the time. A dwarf's stubbornness keeps them from making anything quickly, even if the need is urgent. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing right, as the old saying goes. Of course, the old saying don't make no mention or exception, for when there are dwarven hands what need weapons in their hand in the middle of an orcish siege. Wouldn't surprise me none if some stubborn smith were still carving decorative runes on their hammers, even as orcs were battering down the smithy doors. Orcs. Stinking orcs. A curse upon the earth. Tell me, human, have you ever had misfortune of crossing paths with an orc in your time around these mountains? Pray to your human gods that you never do. Hulgan brutes the size of an ox, and about just as smart. Their kind cares not for peace or loof. They only create an order to destroy. They're enemies of all fair folk, and though long gone are the days where they roomed about in massive warbands, they linger on still in packs like mangy wolves, starving for meat. Bah, all this orc talk is giving me the shivers. I think I need another round. What say ye? Barkeep, two more battle brews, if you'd be so kind. Ah, right. Thank you kindly. Sir, human, remind me again, since the brew seems to be affecting my memory some. 
What did you say you were doing up in these parts? Your kinds are a rare sight here in the high mountain. These slopes are fit for dwarven lungs and dwarven boots. Must be sturdy and thick-blooded to make it up here. Oh, a spot of adventuring, are you? That's a lucrative, if not dangerous, career. I see now why you carry that sword on your hip all keen-like. Speaking of which, I've got to ask you, what is it with the humans and swords? Don't get me wrong, a sword is a fine weapon, aye, but that's all it is. Do you know why us dwarves prefer the axe and hammer? Simply put, it's a practical application of steel. A hammer's good for more than just caving in heads. You can use it for building, for breaking, even for cooking. Just toss a slab of meat on the flat of a hammer and stick it in the campfire. Aye, and it'll cook nice and even. As for axes, well, it's more than just for splitting hairs. It's great for cutting and shaping timber of all sorts. Carving, too, if you're careful. A sword is a sword, and nothing more. But sometimes you need nothing less. You know, I used to dabble in adventuring myself as a younger lad, maybe 200 years back or so. Of course, things are different back then. These mountains are still far off from the frontier, but it only seems to be getting closer and closer now. Human, it might just be the drink in me, but all this chatter has got me reminiscing about me old glory days. By any chance, would you be looking for a spot of company on the high road? I know these mountains like the back of me fist. There are many shortcuts in the hideaways only dwarven eyes might spot in the rocks and trees. Not to mention, an extra pair of hands is always useful. I... I thought he might appreciate the offer. Whoa, now. What's your hurry, human? You want to take on the whole wide world out there while we're still groggy as a bog? Let's sleep off the brew in the commons. And when we wake up, we can still see if we're feeling brave enough to seek out treasures in the dark parts of the world, eh? Human? Long legs? Ach, they've already gone to dreamland, I see. I hope... Yeah, there we are. No worries, barkeep. I'll carry the long legs over to the commons. No sense in having them mess up their backs slumped over the bar all night. That ought to cover it. Sleep tight, human. I have a feeling we've got a big day ahead of us. <laughs>